Hi everyone, Mrs. Below here. In this video, I'm going to be going over the data collected from the Murder and Emil lab. So, according to the case file, a murder has occurred in the town of Wheaton. This is, of course, all make-believe. Uh, central to identifying the individual who committed the crime is establishing where the victim was um, last seen. And part of that includes um, interviewing the family and friends of the victim and um, learning that the victim liked to eat at these three specific restaurant, ra restaurants and would always eat the same thing um, at each restaurant. So at Gino's East, they would have a cheesy, greasy pizza topped with uh, these meat toppings at Buffalo Wild Wings, um, chicken wings, um, not fried, um, with a side of carrots and celery, and then Gia Mia pasta um, with tomato sauce, bread, and olive oil. So part of the lab was testing the quote-unquote victim stomach contents for um, specific macromolecules to try to figure out then which meal they last ate. So in the raw data here, okay, um, so the first test is the brown paper bag test. And this test is for lipids. Um, lipids are fats, and for that test, um, and for each of these tests, we did a control um, so that we can compare our results of the victim's stomach contents um, to that. So here was the lipids test, which tests for fats. And you can see the control side, which water was used as our control, um, is not transparent versus the experimental side that had the victim's stomach contents is transparent. So for those results, the control was not transparent, or you could say translucent, versus the experimental side was transparent. So that's telling us something about the test results on the victim's stomach contents which would be a positive test result for lipids. Next was the iodine test, which is right here. So iodine um, specifically tests for starch, which is a carbohydrate. So um, our control here, which is water, um, would be this like yellow orangey color versus when we added the iodine to the victim's stomach contents, that's the victim's stomach contents, it turned this very dark color. So the color for the control was this orange slash yellow color, while for the victim's stomach contents, when we added the iodine to it, it turned this like um, dark black. It almost actually looks like a navy blue kind of. So again, indicating that this would be a positive test result for carbohydrates on the victim's stomach contents. Versus the last test is the Bayerette test. Uh, this test for proteins. So normally Bayerette is a blue color. So when it's added to water, it still stays that blue color. Um, when we added it to the victim's stomach contents, it still stayed that blue color. It did separate from the victim's stomach contents, but it did not do um, what we saw here with the iodine test. That liquid didn't change the color of the victim's stomach contents. It remained that blue color. So blue, and then it stayed that blue color which would be a negative test result for proteins. So then using that information and also the pre-lab as well will be very helpful, the pre-lab in formative. You can use that information to determine which of these three restaurants the victim had their last meal at, um, which will be explained in a typed paragraph here. 
So a typed paragraph in this space. So, so start typing here in that space. And um, the restaurant needs to be stated where the victim last ate. Okay, so that needs to be clearly stated. Again, refer back to the pre-lab informative. Um, each test needs to be talked about. So you need to talk about, okay, lipids test, test for, I'm sorry, brown paper bag test, test for lipids. A positive result would be transparent. A negative result would be not transparent. And you have to say that for every single test, for iodine and biuret. Again, referring back to your pre-lab. Um, the last two questions in the pre-lab do mention that. So in that pre-lab again, I'm just going to that informative. If you go to the last two questions here, it tells you, um, this is a student version that hasn't been completed yet, um, but it gives you the answers for what each test is testing for and um, what a positive and negative result looks like. Now, a negative result, remember, was for all of our control tests. Those are technically negative test results, just so we have something to compare to. And when you're stating um, whether your uh, victim stomach contents results, you're stating whether those are positive or negative. So you're telling me, were these tests positive or negative? Because that's what you were testing in this lab. Um, so talk about the three tests. Okay, um, what does a positive and negative result look like? Okay, now what were the results of the victim stomach contents? So you have to state that. Were they positive or negative? And then you want to connect each positive test um, to the food that the victim last ate in their meal. And also the negative test how that supports why it was not the other two restaurants. So a very detailed typed paragraph. And then here is where you're going to create a data table. So you want to start by typing it. So table one is what you'll title it. And then you need a descriptive title. I'm just going to write that here. Obviously, you have to come up with that. Descriptive title. So think about what were you testing? Um, so your descriptive title should include um, what was it you were testing, right? So you were testing the victim's stomach contents and you were testing the victim's stomach contents for specific macromolecules. So something like that should be included in the title. So if someone read it, they could understand um, what that data represents. And then for the table itself, um, you can go to insert up here and then pick a data table size. You can add or delete columns and rows if you need to. Um, but one way I would lay this out is I would say chemical, or we could say, yeah, chemical test name. Okay, and you had um, those three tests. You had the brown paper uh, bag, iodine, and then you could just, if you tab over, uh, you can create another column or another row, excuse me. You can always go to table, right click anywhere in the table, um, and you go to table, and then you could insert columns or rows if you need to, and then buy your et. And then make sure you include um, uh, what the control result was. That was using water for each of these tests. Experimental, which was the victim stomach contents. Obviously, we're going to make sure that we spell all these things correctly. Um, was the test... So we're going to say result. So you're going to state whether it was positive or negative. And then you're going to state the macromolecule testing for. So then this data will clearly show, okay, this test, um, these were the results for the control and the experimental. So summarizing this data up here, putting these descriptors in the boxes. What was the result 
um, for the victim's stomach contents. Uh, is that a positive or negative result? So therefore, is that macromolecule present or not present? And then again, you can refer, you can actually refer to that table in your analysis here. Again, your analysis has to be very descriptive, talking about each test, what a positive and negative result looks like for each test, um, what the test result for the victim's stomach contents, was it positive or negative for that test, and what macromolecule is it positive or negative for, and how does that connect to the last meal that they ate. And again, you can refer back to the pre-lab here. It has all three of the meals, and after you answer these questions, then you'll know what macromolecules were in each. Note that in this lab, we did not test for nucleic acids because nucleic acids are found in every uh, food. So that's why we didn't test for it because that wouldn't help us in our test results uh, to determine where the victim last ate.